Ever since David Dobrik decided to leave YouTube and his podcast behind, the friends that he once worked with and gave a platform to all seem to be struggling lately. A few of them have gone on to have pretty successful ventures without David, like Zayn and Heath with their podcast, Corinna, and Jeff with Jeff FM, his barbershop series, and now his new line of hair care products. Some ex-Vlog Squad members have made the most out of the platform they once had through David's vlogs, but one main member who seems to be really struggling with this post-David Dobrik life is Jason Nash. Jason has resorted to essentially e-begging for money on TikTok Live, and a lot of people are getting sick of it. It's a mess, so let's get into it. For a while now, people have been noticing whenever they open up TikTok and scroll a bit, you're always going to come across a live from Jason Nash. I can't escape Jason Nash and like the vlog squad doing battles on here. Imagine hearing that sentence in 2018. What? They're like, yo, yo. There's no way you- 150 people in the live. Let's flip it. Go! Jason seems to be on live at all hours of the day, screaming and begging for galaxies. Please, please. Please. Mike, one more, Mike! Go, Kirsten! One more. Mike, hit the target. Yes, Kirsten. We got Mike, Kirsten. Pretty much, people watching these lives can send you gifts, and each gift equals to a certain amount of money. I'm pretty sure the roses are the most common because they're the cheapest, and the more extravagant the gift, the higher value it has. These creators will go live and have these battles, and whoever gets the most or the highest value gift during the battle wins. That's why you'll usually see Jason Nash screaming on live, battling with other people who are live, trying to get the most gifts or the most amount of money out of his followers. Now, obviously this feature is there for creators on TikTok to have other avenues to make money. We all know TikTok doesn't pay the best, so these gifts can be creators' biggest sources of income from the app. I could see going live and the creator actually providing some kind of entertainment or, you know, sharing a skill with their followers and then accepting gifts and being grateful when they come through. But standing there for five hours at a time, screaming at people to send you better and more expensive gifts is starting to cross the line into begging and people are over it. Here we go. Four seconds left. You guys, thank you. You guys are amazing. Thanks for that. All right, guys, we have 820,000 likes. Double tap my face, please. Let's get to a million. Daily 74. Let's get it to a million likes. Let's see if we can get to a million likes today. I'll stay on until we get to a million. Here we go. Love to see it. 1,200 in the live. Stacey Swanton and Rachel, thank you. Let's go! Grace Love in the building. She's back. Guys, don't forget to follow me up here. Daily 74, top 100 in the tourney. Thank you, Mike Timoney. Let's go. go. We need nine different people to give roses. Here we go. Go, go, go. Five more, five more. Come on, come on. Eight, nine, ten. One more, one more. Go, go, go. Yes. Go, go, go. Thank you. Go, Lucy. The other day, Jason Nash had been live for over four hours, and Tana Mojo had finally had enough of seeing him beg, so she called him out. She suggested that he gets a real job doing DoorDash instead of begging his followers for money. Can someone make Jason Nash a f***ing DoorDash account? If I open my TikTok one more time to seeing him begging for roses on my Live For You page, I'm calling CPS. Have you seen your kids? <laughs> Have you seen them? And also when they go to school, are their friends like, hey, I saw your dad like begging for a galaxy. Like, and I'm, I know I'm a sellout, okay? I just, I just don't get, I just, every single time I've opened my phone, Jason Nash is on live begging for money. And I want answers. Have you seen your kids this month? That's when people started to go over into Jason Nash's live and they were spamming like, get a job at DoorDash. You need to sign up for DoorDash. It was a lot, and Jason actually responded to all of the comments that he was seeing. Get ready, 2,200 in the live. This is insane. Go, 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 go. DoorDash, good. Keep writing DoorDash. I love it. DoorDash, that's perfect. Maybe I will get a job on DoorDash, but let's see. Here we go. Triples coming now. They want me to get a job at DoorDash. That's what 
And this made people start talking about how far Jason has fallen since his vlog days. He spent, what, the last 10 years of his life working for David, building up David's platform, doing any and everything for him, just for David to quit and leave them all without jobs. I think a lot of them thought even if David did quit one day, which I'm sure they knew that day was probably coming, they would have enough of a following to sustain themselves, but that didn't happen. The ones who branched out before David quit and got their own thing going have been doing pretty good for themselves, but I think a lot of people were only watching some of them for the snippets of David in their content. Now that David has enough money and doesn't have to do the vlogs or anything else anymore, he probably doesn't care enough about his friends having enough money and he's just done with it. Jason actually talked about this on his podcast last week. He was saying that he misses the money from the podcast and wish David still wanted to do it. So much and just a little amount of time. Yeah. I miss the, I miss the podcast. I wish he, I miss the money of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he made it seem like he only wanted it to come back because everyone's been asking for it, but we all know it's most likely the money and I can't blame him. I see Jason say this on a TikTok clip like every other week. What do I do? He turned down ten million dollar deal. I see you say that on like TikTok clips oh, all the time. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. With you, well, that's that. like that's like that's like a joke for my act that I say, which is, you know, he turned down all this money and all he had to do was talk to me once a week for forty minutes. You know, like, <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and you, I'll tell you why it stings is because that's that's literally every comment on TikTok Live. When's the podcast coming back? So that's why it stings, because it's like, if no one yeah. cared, I'd yeah. be like, oh, whatever. No, that was the best podcast ever. It was fun. Um, and you were great on it, and you would come on. Thanks. He would always, <laughs> he would always drag you in there, and you'd be like, I gotta work. <laughs> and then he'd yeah. fire you up. It is crazy how, like, no matter how many people love it around him, if he doesn't love it, he just won't do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the, which is totally fair. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Which is like, if you're not into it, that's why I don't. I don't bring it up or whatever. It is a crazy concept because you give that concept to anybody else and they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't do that for $10 oh, million? Dollars? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. All you have to do is literally go from your bedroom to your downstairs <laughs> pantry and talk <laughs> for 40 minutes for $10 million and everyone loves you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that's not the case. Not everyone loves you. There's, yeah, there's but, a lot of, there's a lot of people I'm that saying, are like, pissed too. True, but I'm just saying... Generally, the people that listen. Yeah, generally the people that listen. Yeah, yeah, Love yeah. You, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's really fun. And that has to hurt. Knowing all David has to do is sit in a room with his friend for an hour a week to make that kind of money and he's refusing to is so hard to comprehend. Like, what kind of money do you have to have to turn down such an easy job for that kind of payoff? The only thing I can maybe see is if he's making even more than that from his deal with Snapchat, and he just doesn't think it's worth the backlash and the potential drama that could come from it. Another creator being called out for asking their fans for money is Rylan Adams. Rylan and Lizzie have been working on a script for a Christmas movie, and before the holidays, they read a bit of the screenplay on Shane's podcast. And Shane actually was the one to tell them that they should create a campaign to raise funds to make this movie, but Ryland didn't seem to really like that idea. Well, they ended up making the Kickstarter and they're asking for $300,000 for their Christmas movie. And this is what they have to say about their film. Lizzie wrote the Christmas movie of your dreams for us to star in and now you can help us make it so we can all see it. In the movie, join Lily, Lizzie, and Zach, who's Ryland, hosts of an infamous relationship advice podcast as they embark on a hilarious and heartwarming journey back to Lily's Christmas-obsessed hometown. Scarred by a traumatic high school incident involving her crush Chug, Lily has since avoided emotional entanglements, while Zach has sworn off love after a Christmas Eve betrayal. Their chaotic podcast attracts a massive following, and a tempting sponsorship deal comes in with a unique condition. They must return to Lily's hometown to confront her past and process her unresolved feelings towards Chug. What follows is a festive roller coaster of Christmas traditions, accidental relationships, and one wild podcast episode that changes everything. As Zach navigates a secret connection with Chug, trying to balance Lily's advances and genuine emotions, the town becomes a stage for Lily's over the top attempts to win back her crush. Unintentionally, Lily finds herself forging a genuine connection with her sibling's brother-in-law, 
leading to unexpected consequences that jeopardize her well-being. Tensions reach a boiling point when a live podcast episode reveals Zach's hidden involvement with Chug, shattering the friendship and unraveling their comedic empire. Amidst the chaos, both Lily and Zach undergo a much-needed transformation, realizing the true meaning of the holiday spirit and the importance of genuine connections. It's definitely giving Hallmark, but some people must want it because so far, they've raised nearly $10,000. They're also offering rewards, depending on how much money you donate. $20 gets your name in the credits, $100 gets you a producer credit in the opening credits, and $500 gets you a ticket to watch the screening of the movie with Rylan and Lizzie. When I first heard they were doing a Kickstarter for a movie, I was initially confused because I always thought Kickstarters were for physical inventions and products, but movies are actually a very popular category on Kickstarter. The next thing I thought was $300,000 seems like a bit much to be asking for, and I'm not the only one who thinks that. Comments left under his Kickstarter are saying that he'll never raise that much money, especially with the minimum perks that he's offering. One comment said, To be honest, you guys will never reach a goal of $300,000 with the rewards you're offering. Think of how many producers that'll take at $100 a pop. Also, if you reached your goal of that much money, it better be good. I recently helped Associate produce Terrifier 2 and we raised $250,000. Have you seen it? It made 15 million off a Kickstarter of 250,000. So your movie better be just as high quality at that budget. Other people were saying that their rewards weren't high enough of an incentive to get people donating, with one person writing, I think you guys would get a lot more traction if you had physical rewards. I know that fulfillment is a logistics nightmare, but with you guys already having the merch hookup with killer merch, I feel like you could and should make it happen, even if it is just a promo coupon code for the Sip or Shane merch that already exists. You need to have some reward more than a name in the credits to get this going. On their first podcast back after having babies, Rylan and Lizzie promoted the Kickstarter and asked people to donate to it. Just have a shit ton of money and you want like a big part in this movie or we your want dad to make can this fund it. Movie. If you just like convince daddy to just <laughs> fund the Kickstarter. Or if literally every single one of you just drops two dollars, we can actually make the movie. Is that oh my god. Everyone. Everyone. But <laughs> two dollars. Two dollars! Come on. Oh, come on. Are you kidding? Come on, <laughs> go ask your neighbor for it and then drop it in the Kickstarter. And you know what? If your neighbor says yes and you're still able to, maybe drop four bucks. Wow. You know how fast this could multiply? Very quickly. Go to the comments at Calabasas and stand in front of that Ralph's and just ask people. Oh my God. Should we do that? And this didn't sit right with some people. Many people said that they had the financial means to fund it themselves and they shouldn't be asking for money. Writing... I love y'all, but you both asking the public to fund your movie when you have millions, Rylan, is so out of touch with reality. Your husband is worth millions and you need 300,000? You have two houses and a G-Wagon, yet here you are. Asking the public majority is struggling because of inflation. Please invest in yourself and fund this on your own. The audacity of a supposed millionaire asking his fans who all probably have less than he does to fund any kind of project. Have some dignity and invest in your own project. But Rylan isn't actually the first YouTuber to ask for funding for a movie. Joey Graceffa recently asked his audience to donate so they could make an Escape the Night movie. Ever since I announced last week that there is going to be an Escape the Night movie, hopefully with the help of you guys, I've gotten a lot of questions and I figured let's just sit down and just have an open conversation about what all the tea is. But first, I do want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has supported the Indiegogo campaign. We've already raised over $83,000 in under a week, which is so crazy. Crazy. And Joey actually received a much different reaction than Ryland. I think since Escape the Night is already loved and is an established project, it felt more legit than Ryland's Christmas movie. Escape the Night has a strong fan base, and since YouTube hasn't picked it back up for another season, Joey wanted to make a movie because making a movie is cheaper than doing a series. How come you're doing a movie and not season five of Escape the Night? And uh, I feel the same way. I would much rather do season five of Escape the Night than make a movie. However, I have been trying for the past four years to make season five happen, and it's just been difficult and slow. So the reason that we're doing a movie, which I kind of explained, is pretty much it's 
what's most likely able to be accomplished right now. You know, making a TV show costs so much more money than it does to make a movie. Just to give you some context, uh, season three and four were around the $4 million mark. So if we want to make season five, it would be around three or $4 million. Now that is a lot harder to get, obviously, than making a movie for a million dollars, which is way much more possible. So that is the reason I'm just sick and tired of waiting and I figured let me take matters into my own hands and try to get you guys on board to fund a movie. And I've seen several movies get funded on Indiegogo that don't even have a fan base to start with. And I know that the Escape the Night fan base is ravenous for more Escape the Night content. So I figured, you know what? Let's just try it. Let's see what happens. He asked for $250,000. And since he was asking for this much money, he came prepared. He's obviously very serious about this because he already had examples of what the movie will look like, what the poster will look like, he had pictures, he had a cast in mind of returning Escape the Night influencers, and he had perks that made sense. $25 got you a digital copy of the movie when it's released, $50 got you a physical copy, and then there were add-ons like a ticket to the screening, a physical copy of the actual screenplay, and merch. The campaign just felt more planned out, like it was an actual project that would happen for sure. I'm not saying that his wouldn't happen, but Joey's felt like there was a plan in place for production and cast and everything like that compared to Lizzie and Rylands. He ended up raising $156,000 and it looks like that was enough to get things going for them. But I want to know what you think. Do you think asking for that much money when you show how financially well off you are is a bit out of touch or do you think it makes sense? Also, why do you think Joey had such a different reaction and so much more success with his campaign? Do you think it's because Escape the Night is already established and people know what they're paying for? All I know is if Rylan doesn't raise the full $300,000, then they won't get any of that money. It's listed as being all or nothing, so if they don't raise the full amount, it'll go back to the people who donated, and I guess Ryland will have to fund it on his own. Anyway guys, let me know what you think about everything down below, and I'll see you next time.